Forty years ago, in 1969, we witnessed this historic moment. Yeah, now step off the lamp now. I wish I was on the moon looking back at the Earth. So, I, yes, I guess I am surprised. I mean, I was a, a little kid when Apollo happened. And I think anybody in 1972, if you had told them that in 2009 we still wouldn't have been back to the moon, they would have thought you were nuts. Uh, but part of the reason is Apollo happened out of sequence in history. Uh, it wasn't a natural sequence of rocket development and exploration in human spaceflight because uh, it was all accelerated due to the Cold War and this race to get the first human on the moon and come back. So we've been sort of paying the price for that ever since. Uh, we probably in the natural progression of events, if we hadn't had the Cold War, we wouldn't have gone to the moon until maybe 10 or 15 years later. And so now that we went to the moon suddenly, rather than you know a more natural progression would have been low Earth orbit, and perhaps building a space station, then going to the moon, in an Apollo style, going to different places, and then building an outpost, and then going out beyond the moon, say to asteroids or Mars. So the history got a little scrambled, and I think it kind of was a big dis disservice to exploration in one sense. But you know, it also accelerated the development of miniature computers and human spaceflight. So we can't back and go go back and rerun history. But yes, I am surprised that we're not on the moon right now. But I can guarantee you that uh, the Chinese will be fairly soon. So we have a choice right now whether we want to watch someone else lead humans back to the moon or whether we actually want to go back to the moon ourselves and be leaders. Now ASU is helping NASA return to the moon with the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Main engine ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket with LRO Elcross, America's first step of a lasting return to the moon. But in terms of what LRO is collecting, is this will really tell us we've got a lot of work to do now that we're collecting the data. It's not just collecting data. It has to be reduced and analyzed, and we have to determine uh, where are their resources, where are the geologically engaging spots. And I really think the next step before we make a final decision is a spacecraft or two that actually sit down on the moon and take the results that we've done from up above and then move around on the surface and really do the detailed measurements that you cannot do from orbit. There are some measurements you just cannot take. For instance, this question, um, are there water ices in Pearl Machado craters? What we can do from orbit tells us the best places to go look to determine A, if there really is water, and B, what concentration. But to do that, you need to set a vehicle in there, dig a hole, and take a measurement in situ. So I would say after LRO, and we've analyzed the data, the next step, are one or two or three rovers that are very capable in terms of ge geochemistry measurements, uh, geophysical measurements, and geology on the surface to really nail down which is the best place to go. Landings and a base are imminent. Keith Jennings, Arizona State University.